Now, this comes as representatives from the US have already raised concerns about just how prepared Australia is for AUKUS, particularly the infrastructure needed in the HMAS Stirling vicinity. Well, to discuss this, let's bring in now Shadow Defence Minister Andrew Hasty. Andrew, thank you for your time. Look, what has concerned you about what unfolded in Senate estimates there last week? There are a number of things, Sherry, which concern me. The first is the, the lack of uh, commitment from the WA State Government to deliver AUKUS on time. As your viewers would know, from 2027, there will be a base, Submarine Rotational Force West, out in Perth, which will host up to four nuclear submarines, three from the US, one from the UK. We've got two years to get that ready. And what we learn in estimates is that we're behind on schedule with the building of the infrastructure. And we've also uncovered that uh, Premier Cook, the WA Premier, is, is not serious. He's only met twice, in fact, with Jonathan Mead, the Admiral who heads up the Australian Submarine Agency. Whereas if you compare that to uh, Premier Malinowskis in South Australia, he's met 16 times. So there's a lack of drive and AUKUS is a national mission. All local governments, all state governments and the federal government has to be driving hard to make this happen uh, in 2027 and then by uh, the start of the next decade when we get our first Virginia class submarines. And just how concerned do you think that uh, the US is over the pace that Australia is moving? Well, um, I've had plenty of feedback from the US and the UK. Um, there is a, an ambivalence about AUKUS, particularly in Western Australia from the state government. And I think Richard Miles and the Prime Minister need to be doing more to drive this. Uh, Premier Melanowskis, uh, I've got to give credit to him. He is uh, mission focused. He said a couple of weeks ago in Canberra that AUKUS is a single mission for the six states that they all should be working to deliver it along with the leadership of the federal government. And I think that's the message that we need to, to take going forward. So um, there is concerns. And we've also uncovered last week that there's an offshore wind farm. Well, we know the offshore wind farm is being proposed by Chris Bowen off the coast of WA, mm. uh, 8,000 square kilometres, in fact, just to the south of the base, which is also a problem. All right, we'll keep coming back to that topic because it is incredibly important. Uh, nothing more important for our national security right now than AUKUS. Uh, but I want to ask you about Chinese Premier's upcoming visit. Of course, the Prime Minister announced that just yesterday. Um, do you expect Albanese will address the problems that exist with the aggression we've seen from Beijing, uh, not just in the South China Sea, but to our Navy divers, to our uh, recent fighter pilot jets? Do you expect Albanese will actually raise these things that he has failed to do so far at any sort of ministerial level? That's right. I think it definitely should be on the table. Um, in any relationship, there has to be boundaries. And uh, the Chinese military has breached a number of boundaries over the last year. We saw last year our Navy divers experience a sonar attack whilst under the water from a Chinese destroyer. And just recently, we saw a Chinese fighter fire flares at a Royal Australian Navy Seahawk, which was very, very high risk behaviour in both instances. And the government failed to raise this at the appropriate levels. Anthony Albanese had an opportunity last year to raise it with President Xi. He didn't. And so I think um, this is a perfect opportunity to do that and also to raise outstanding cases. Young Jen Hung, who's still being held um, by the Chinese government. Um, there are plenty of things that we can raise, even exactly. while we talk about our trade relationship, which is important. Exactly, exactly. We still have an Australian imprisoned in China. We can't forget that. Just lastly, before you go, um, the Prime Minister in his press conference uh, late yesterday was asked whether he'd follow our other like-minded allies, the US and UK, and take action against TikTok. Well, have a look at his response. Uh, US and Canada, uh, the governments are both considering, in terms of TikTok, potentially banning it. They cite serious concerns about democracy. Is our intelligence the same? And if so, why aren't we going down the same path? Uh, and if we're not, why not? Well, I, I don't. I'm surprised you asked me to uh, reveal what our intelligence should be at a press conference. No, I'm really uh, asking for the government's position on. Well, our, our position hasn't changed. Next question, Andrew. I mean, he didn't even seriously consider the question, and it is a reasonable question, given the action that is being taken by UK and the US. 
Precisely. I think it was a weak answer from a weak Prime Minister, particularly when it comes to national security matters. Uh, it's very clear that TikTok has a very close relationship with the Chinese government. There's a reason why the US is banning it. And um, we know already that the Australian government won't allow TikTok to be installed on Australian government phones. Uh, so there is a problem there. And we need to think about how we're going to protect the data of young Australians, which will be harvested by TikTok and potentially end up in the hands of uh, the Chinese government. So these are really important questions, and I think that was just a very offhand and weak response from the Prime Minister. He didn't even take the question seriously. All right, Andrew Hastie, thank you very much for joining us this evening.